<laughs> You're good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get it started. You all ready? Oh, whoa. Okay, there we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Grub Hub. I'm B Bunny, your host. A little history about myself. I'm currently in the military. Yes, I'm also a retired paintball professional. Been playing WoW since the age of six. My dad used to work for Blizzard. And currently, um, we're just trying something new. So, Expo, introduce yourself. Um, well, uh, my Discord name is es Expo, but most of the server knows me as Kel. Uh, I have been playing World of Warcraft since original Burning Crusade and played pretty consistently. Um, I was in the military too. Oh, yeah. uh, so I was I was playing Warlords of Draenor on deployment. Um, I had buddies carrying me through raids with 2.5k ping. Um, <laughs> uh, World of Warcraft has been a huge part of my life for a really long time. Um, I did quit playing during BFA and mm -hmm. Shadowlands, uh, and I decided to come back for Classic. And uh, and I never really got into roleplay until I came to Classic. I really didn't even know what it was. <laughs> so I was completely ignorant, despite all of my years of actually playing the game. But here I am now, uh, an RP fiend, and that is the RP... Roleplay is my endgame content, basically. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Tristian. Hello, everybody. My name is Tristian. Um, as you can tell, it is a female name because that is the character that I play. Um, I have been playing since vanilla Wildcraft, uh, Warcraft. Um, I have been gamer pretty much all my life. Um, I've worked most of my life. I have no military, but uh, currently I actually run my own business in real life. Um, I have been big in the roleplay community for a very long time. I actually started on a RP uh, PvP server venture company back on the on the OG days, and uh, I've just been every time I play, it's always on a roleplay server or I have a, a roleplay thematic about everything I do. Sweet, uh, Yama. Uh, hey, so. My name in character is Nenia. A lot of people know me as that. It's pretty much the only character I play. I have no experience playing MMORPGs, but when I was teaching English in Japan, we were under quarantine, and I was stuck in a tiny apartment for three weeks on end. So I decided to reach out for my own mental health to a community, and I found one. And now I moderate the official Discord server and cause chaos at every turn sweet so welcome everybody um so we're gonna get into the questions how about that sure all right so why do y'all love role-playing start with expo first oh man um where do i even start to be honest i asked myself this for a very long time uh, I don't know what about it drew me in, uh, but it always has. Even when I was a little kid in middle school, running around uh, in Burning Crusade, you know, sitting at the tavern, drinking ale, and then my screen gets all blurry. I was like, oh, this is fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, from that all the way till what I do now where I have, the, I mean, giant campaigns and character arcs it's almost like a like a dungeons and dragons campaign just in a in a, the the confines of a video game um i think what has always drawn me in is the immersion the immersion of it all how you can just you can lose yourself in that world or that character or like even certain themes mm -hmm. you if you really want to explore a certain theme of like revenge or guilt or acceptance or selflessness or whatever you know whatever tropes that you would typically find in a fantasy setting um it's i i just like being immersed in stories and being able to have a hand in immersing myself in whatever story i want to it's kind of like being able to write a, a book that you want to read in a way yeah um 
that and the excellent community that I have the pleasure of uh, f finally being able to be a part of. I had no idea how great the RP community has been, and now I am very fortunate to be a part of it myself. I, I agree with that. I run into role players all the time, and I just like I want to like be a bystander and like watch them as they role play. I was like, yo, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tristan. Um, so for me, like I say, I've been part of roleplay stuff for decades, pretty much at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I'm 36, and I've pretty much been doing LARP roleplay anything since I was 14, 15. It started with me running around a backyard with a foam sword, beating up my friends and my neighbors. Um, so you I got mean, I got really sword? big. In, I hey, I uh, <laughs> my biggest weapon is eight feet at this point. I do with pole arms. <laughs> Um, I actually have a particular foam sword that I have lovingly named Big Ben, um, because some plate, some groups allow steel plate armor to be worn for the LARP fields. I hit oh, a guy wow. so loud it sounded like a like the like a bell going off, because his armor dented from when I hit him. And it was just that sweet spot, that one little piece of weakness, where it, tong when I hit him. So I have lovingly named this 68 inch long heavy sword Big Ben for that reason. Wow. So, yes, I still do it to this day, uh, even though my body <laughs> protests every single time I do it. But I have, uh, like I say, I've been in the roleplay community for a very long time. I love roleplay because, especially with gaming, because I find it adds a whole different depth to why do I play this game. <laughs> uh, like, my particular character that I play is a, a Blood Elf Paladin. She is protection spec. Uh, she is Teresa and Goldfist, the stalwart. She is there to always be the shield for her coalition called Bulwark. That's the guild I run. Mm -hmm. Her her goal is to literally go out and, like, I will do assistance of lobies helping out with different quests. I'll just randomly show up. Geared out, level 70, Paladin, hang on, let me help you with this level 18 elite goblin. I'll knock his knock him on his ass for you. <laughs> I just, I'll just i go around doing stuff like that or just randomly buff and heal people. Like, I'll see somebody dying from a group, big group of mobs, I'll just pop them with a heel and just be like, keep going, I know you have this. Just I, it, it adds a whole other level of what I like to see in the game. It's like with the whole opening of the Dark Portal for Burning Crusade, it became a big thing of like, as much as she wants to help those in the endeavors of the and Outlands, she always has a thing where we need to remember those that are still not ready to travel through the portal, and we have to still do things to assist them. And that's what a lot of her a lot of the events that I run are based on that, where we go as a guild and run around and help people in different zones. Like I said, quests, gankers, stuff like that. <laughs> so it can add just a whole different depth of gameplay to what you want. I mean, I'll, I'll hardly do questing. I'll do that. I will rather help somebody than actually make gold. That's just how I like to play my game. Awesome. I've never LARPed before. I think... <laughs> the only time I've ever LARPed was playing paintball, which we had like Mandalorian files, so we role played like a Star Wars event, and it was I so love cool. It. it was so I cool. I love it. It hurt, but it was cool. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding when I say my body protests every single day I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yama? Uh, first of all, never been paintball. I would like to try it someday. Um, secondly, to piggyback off both of them. I think playing like under the bridge queen when I was in fifth grade uh, was the beginning of my RP journey when What'd I didn't even it? recognize it. <laughs> under the bridge queen, there were four cardinal directions. God, I'm unlocking a childhood memory right now. Four cardinal directions. There was like queen of the north, south, east, and west. And we had servants, which were other neighborhood kids. Hmm. <laughs> I thought you were calling Wrath of the Witch King something else under the I mean, at this point, we tell Wells writing. Who knows? But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for about a decade, I've been playing various tabletop games like D&D, Pathfinder, so forth. I like my cons and my run fairs. I think escapism is a really important part of my own life, as well as a lot of my friends' lives, because it allows us to, with sincerity and verisimilitude, explore themes, like Kel said, and enact out fantasies hmm. uh it also helps us with our day-to-day -day. so it's kind of reflection for me in some ways and it's just hella fun honestly 
uh, yeah, protecting those lobbies. Like when I was in the Storm and Guard, I would run people through dead mines all the time. I mean, I was a priest and it took a while, but I did. And I was like, you should join up with the guard, you know, and it's cheesy and it's kind of cringe. But at some point, you just got to lean into the cringe and be like, this is actually really fun. This is exciting. This is like, yeah, a book that you want to read that you're writing yourself. You can draw upon like literature that you've read, media you've consumed, your own personal background and things you want to see in the world and even though it is the world of warcraft <laughs> lol it's still a world because of the community that is true so what's the story be behind all uh, your characters like what's your favorite character to play and what's the story behind it i know uh tristian got into it a little bit <laughs> Oh, that's just one. I have several. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with Expo. Uh, well, I too am guilty of maybe having a few too many characters that I enjoy playing. Um, I'll, I'll mostly hit on my main one, but I'll go ahead and give some examples of some of, some of my other ones. Um, so the one I mostly play is a druid, Kelador, and he... Uh, started his training young under um, Fandral Staghelm and went into the dream. And uh, and he saw the horrors of the nightmare. And they scared, that, that scared the hell out of him. And when he awoke during the Battle of Hyjal uh, to help defend, afterwards it became his mission to find a way to stop the nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, and he met another druid who had dabbled in the nightmare and uh and he basically became her her pupil and uh there was a whole story arc with that she was a crazed cultist for a void lord um we had a we have a large guild on grobulus cult of cathal which recently wrapped up a, a major storyline that involved dozens of people throughout different parts of it um that's a whole thing i'll get into later <laughs> but um but yeah he, he basically trained under her to learn how to master the nightmare and he battles the the conflict between wanting to do good and and heal the emerald dream and dealing with this exposure to this nightmare and, and staving off the corruption and trying to balance that like you know dealing you know the ends justify the means he kind of dabbles in into some evil magic some dark stuff to be able to control it and he has to find the balance in his life mm -hmm. um so that's it that's my druid um i've also had some storylines interconnect with that with yamaneko here her priest um but I have other characters. I have a few carefree characters. If I'm just in the mood to roleplay a, a rowdy, drunken dwarf, I have a dwarf alt for that. If I want to play some evil mage who, you know, is turning to fell magic to get ahead, I have a character for that. And if I just want to be a, a citizen, I have a level one. My bank alt, actually, is just a regular old Stormwind citizen. <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually... <laughs> Some of my greatest scenes have been on him because I'll just be walking down and I've gotten mugged before. Wait, that happens? Um, like you get mugged? Right. <laughs> Wait, hold I up. Went to go, <laughs> I went to go sign a guild charter and the person, for whatever reason, they were in Goldshire instead of Stormwind. So <laughs> it's my level one bank alt. He's ungilded. So I was like, yeah, sure. Let me go sign a guild charter for five gold. So I went over to sign the guild charter <laughs> in Goldshire and a couple of people... Who are friends of mine i don't think they realized that it was me on this character uh, but i have interacted with them on other characters but they just saw they knew what i was doing they saw me get the five gold and they saw me walking up the road back to stormwind sure enough <laughs> they, they came and mugged me um one of them even threw in a few uh a few expertly woven in skyrim bandit quotes in there thinking i wouldn't notice <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, I have a Yo. different character for whatever mood I'm feeling. <laughs> Yo, what the heck? So, I didn't know that's a part of role play. Like, you just feel like, give me your money. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there, there's different ways to go about it, too. You all join a party, and we usually, what we'll do is slash roll 20. Just like a D&D &D game, rolling a 20-sided die, and it'll be like, uh, you know, uh, one of the characters, her name was Jilin, and she'll be like, Jilin, um... 
swipes your coin purse, right? And she'll roll a 20-sided die. I'll roll, you know, type slash roll 20. And if she rolls an 18 and I roll like a 4, then we'll play it out as she took my she took my coin purse. And if I'm feeling particularly generous, I might actually open trade with her and go ahead and just give her the 5 gold to play it out. Um, otherwise, if she loses, maybe she says she, uh, she swipes for my coin purse and I roll like a 20 and she rolls like a 2. Uh, I'll play it off as like I dodged it and then I'll just run down the road, right? And then and that'll be maybe that'll be the end of the scene right there. <laughs> it takes a lot of mutual uh, trust and um, mutual understanding between players and characters, but it, it can be a lot of fun. The possibilities are endless. Wow. I, I'm already learning so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tristan? Um, uh so what was the question? I got so lost in thinking of all the other stories. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, you're good. Um, do you have a story behind your character uh, for roleplay? Okay, so I'm going to give you guys my top three characters. Uh, first of all being Trissian, the Blood Off Paladin. You kind of, She was born on the outskirts of Silvermoon. She uh, was basically born for war. She has lived war. She has basically done nothing but combat. She is specialized with shield assault combat that's why um i can send you guys a picture of her later but the shield she uses is not this giant big tower shield but it's kind of a uh like a uh, a really pointy like a plus sign with the spikes on it mm -hmm. so it's made for a very aggressive style of fighting with a shield so it's so that way she is she's not one to just always stand there but she is usually ask any of my guildies i am the first in there usually leaving them behind with no support <laughs> first to go into the fight and usually the first to die but it usually takes about a minute and a half of people beating on me to actually kill me because you know tanks yeah uh but basically she uh her story goes that at one point just before the blood elves actually joined up with the horde she and part of uh, a large mem a large portion of her squads were sent out to the plague lands to make an attack on Noxoramus, just to make a final push into the plague lands they were ambushed by the Scourge, and she was basically the last one to survive, pretty much bleeding out, ready, going to die on the battlefield. When some of the Argent Dawn came, found her, rescued her, brought her back to the chapel, and she was able to make a recovery there and ended up seeing the benefits of joining with the Horde. And basically, she's very much an outlier when it comes to your typical blood elf. She is not prim and proper she is she'll get drunk in the bar with everybody she'll fist fight she'll fight in the mud she doesn't care about dresses do not ask her to get into a dress <laughs> so um but then the guy the one i used to play before tris was zervan raptor bane my troll elemental shaman the man was the big man that did all the zappy zap and all the electric <laughs> dancing basically he was a the he was What's the best way to say it? He was also the master of the swamps. He lived in Swamp of Sorrows because he I was part of a guild called the Blacktooth Grin. And our base was in Stoneart in Swamp of Sorrows. I made that my place. If there was any alliance in that territory, they were dead. No questions asked. And I would just melt every single one I could. If I could win. That was... You gotta win first. Of course. Um, but I was take... At, at level... 48 i was taking on 60s i didn't win all the time but that was just his thing he defended his ter his territory as hard as he possibly could mm -hmm. um but he is also part of a family and then uh, the other person i play is his sister Fulura raptor bane or after she was blessed by her loa became craig sweet tusk and she is a restoration shaman so still a big elemental user but um more in the restorative arts and she is actually a much darker person than any of the other characters I did. We actually did a interrogation scene where uh, somebody was, what was it? It was a particular, another player, and this is all done with consent. Like when we talk about role players are specific about like trust and understanding that the unspoken rules of role play, I messaged this person and cleared it with them very early. But it was a torture interview or uh, interrogation. The bystanders where... walking by. Uh, oh. oh yeah, no, this was kept in <laughs> this was kept in raid chat. This was not done publicly <laughs> because we you, this would not have been okay for the public to understand. But she basically 
cut off the genitalia of what the person they were interrogating. Oh my god! <laughs> like I say, she is one of the darkest, but you would never know it. If you had met her in game, you would never know it. But when she comes down to it... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but otherwise, she's usually a very perky, happy, bubbly person. But it came to the point where this person threatened her family. <laughs> and that's when the dark side really came out. So it's like, when you, it, that's why I like having multifaceted characters in that effect. I don't play her much with that kind of energy. It is incredibly taxing. I am not that kind of person normally. But it's very good for stretching yourself on what are your limits and what you can understand with roleplay. So dark doesn't always mean bad. It definitely will test your limits of what you are comfortable with, though. Adam MT said in chat, remind me not to get captured by a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Adam MT. <laughs> uh, Yama? Uh, so two things. First of all, Adam, t <laughs> Adam might actually like it. Second of all, <laughs> Black Tooth Grin. Tell Gore French that I miss him. Also, Tasha. Oh, I miss him too. I'm, mad. I'm I sad know. that they all left. I'm sad that they all left. Yeah, they were our uh, primary world PvP buddies when I was in OSC. They were hella fun to fight. Great, well, a lot of I great probably, You and I probably <laughs> crossed a couple times then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We probably got into it. <laughs> Um, but speaking of PvP, I'm not a great PvPer, but I really enjoy it. World PvP, like, Arenas I suck at because of positioning, I love VGs, uh, but I let myself as a Disc Priest, uh, I, my spec informs how I play my character. Mm -hmm. So, Nenia is my ult, and I have, or, sorry, she's my main, and I, uh, I made, made her in Japan, which, uh, Sorry, someone's like mowing the lawn right now. Awesome timing. Uh, <laughs> which like informed a lot of like how I played her. You know, she's a shrine maiden. She came from a shrine uh, where she didn't have parents, but she had a great community around her of, of priestesses who who guided her and guided her path. And as we know from Kaldori lore, uh, priestesses often go off into the world trying to educate and inspire people to um, maybe not proselytize them, but you know, to do good and, and to help others and so forth. Uh, so she went to Stormwind, uh, joined the Guard. That was my first interaction, which is kind of an odd thing for her. But she climbed the ranks, and then she found a Shadow Cabal uh, that pulled the strings in a lot of sectors of the Alliance RP community for a while. Uh, that ended, and she uh, joined up with the Moonblade Sentinels, who is a, is a very <laughs> great group of people. It was a Night Elf-only guild for a while, and we did raids as Night Elf-only. So that was fun. Not having warlocks and mages, super cool. Love that. But we did it, and it was it was excellent. All of that is built into her character. But I essentially play her as a witchy hermeticist, which helps me because I was raised as a military atheist. I had absolutely no spirituality or religion in my life as a kid, and uh, allowing and playing her has allowed me to really explore those themes that were missing in my life for a long time. It also Helps me facilitate uh, Kaldori connections within Stormwind, as Nenia is also a counselor. She is the only counselor uh, left. Like a therapist counselor? <laughs> like a counselor of the park district. Oh. I was like, yo, that, that's like a whole new, like, yeah, I'm not going mean... to have to get therapy. I'm going to get therapy in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, she also, like, mentors people. She's... Uh, you know, as a collective, when we RP, we all kind of agree where power lies. And I've created this character that through random happenstance, because again, just made her out as a random shrine maiden, has kind of ascended to like this place of, of uh, being able to help others and other characters like go up, to look up to for, for wisdom, knowledge. She's not altogether a good character. She's a hypocrite and she tries her best to balance light and shadow. She often fails. Uh, she has a couple redeeming qualities, but um, I really, really like delving into the depths of like her guilt, her shame, and her own failings because it's just exciting for me to hurt your darlings, you know. Mm -hmm. In the literary staple, I also have a paladin named Meta, who I'm just exploring as an Armenian. Um, I really resonated well with the idea of um, not having a home. 
and being part of a diaspora, which the Dreadai kind of fit that mold. And then I have two secret alts that if anyone is listening will probably know because they care enough about the community. Uh, I play Verity. She's the head bitch in charge of an outlaw gang. I'm talking like Wild West, and it is tapping so you into robbed, my Missouri roots. You you robbed? <laughs> <laughs> we robbed a carriage last week. I mean, I'm in the. <laughs> there's <Not> mugging. <laughs> No, it's actually not me. He's in there, he's in there with Just me. Just imagine it's office. like, <laughs> yeah. uh... <laughs> So where do you hold these? Tristine has an appointment with you guys? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it will, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we do, a, we do some casual debauchery and, and outlaw things. Uh, and then I also have a super secret alt that will murder you in a body of water. Oh, but uh, no one's priest? figured. No. <laughs> she's a she's a siren. No one's figured it out yet from Queen Ajara's time. And uh, like Kel mentioned earlier, uh, whatever whatever flavor I'm feeling, that's why I hop on. It's great. It's a great way to explore different things, different moods. I mean, I get home from bartending and I'm like, I don't know how much socialization I have in me. I don't feel like socializing. Hop on Maida because she's a bitch. I feel sassy. Hop on Verity because she's also a bitch, but she got a mouth on her. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and yeah, those are my characters. Right on. I have one. I this is basically when my friends are like dragging me in the D and D. They're like, "Come on, it'll be fun. Just you just got to write a story behind your character." So I wrote a story behind my gladiator Thalnor, where um, he grew up at uh, near Quothalas on an island where the mana uh, the mana on that island was blessed with the holy light. And then when Arthas came, it kind of disrupted the mana force in the area and corrupted all of his people and killed all of his people and Thalnor was the last high elf elf in the area and the uh the mana praised him for being the only one there so they mind controlled and mind controlled him and corrupted him to fight his own people and to um become a gladiator for like the elemental wars and around bfa time i don't know when they add the blue eyes in is when he becomes uncorrupted and finally snaps out of the illusion. That's that, cool. Like that's, I actually really that, appreciate that's all, that. That's, that's all I got for uh, Thalnor. Like, that's my only story character that, that I have. Because but it's cool I, because... Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. If you just have like a base foundation, you can just do whatever you want after that. Let the events affect you. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. That's that's actually a really good point, what she just brought up, that I don't even think I realized going in, because um, I didn't have much RP experience. All you got to do is set up a foundation, and you know, you're know you playing with dozens or hundreds of other role players. There will be crazy events that happen to your character. You don't need a giant structured plan. You just need a foundation, and the events will affect you. You can just, you know, you just take it from there. It, you'll find a story. Yeah. I have a, there's a great example of that, actually, I had, um, again, in my time with Blacktooth Grin, we had a hunter who had, um, she really didn't have a name, she was the seventh of her family, so she got given the name Sevkin, and then during her lifetime with the Blacktooth Grin, she ended up leading a hunt for one of the dragons that were in the Swamp of Sorrows, the green, the, the green dragon that's there. And she led that hunt and ended up giving the killing blow, so she was named Sevkin Dragonheart. So it doesn't, she didn't pick it, she was given it. So it's like things that you create with your character can just evolve and become that just from the events that you just participate in. Hmm. Exactly. And it rewards like the organic nature of growth and creative co collaboration. Yeah, that's what I always find fascinating, like just building the story as you go and adding on to your character. This is also where I discovered that Triss is a bad drunk. <laughs> I should have, I guess I have to embellish with that, where she becomes, she's very, usually very stoic, very pragmatic, very structurally sound. When she drinks and she gets drunk, she becomes that stereotypical, overzealous paladin of the light, the holy crusader that everybody hates being around because <laughs> by the light we must do this for reasons <laughs> she ended up 
At one point, the first time she got absolutely destroyed was during Brewfest in um, the first Brewfest that happened in Burning Crusade. She, they came to a part where we were at in, in front of Ogremar and the, the Dark Iron Dwarves did their attack. Well, the, the attack ended up failing because nobody defended it, so the dwarves broke all the, all, all the barrels. She started sobbing, saying, they broke and destroyed the drink. We must take the fight to them. She goes running into Ogremar, goes to the top of the tower of the Lightmaster, and starts screaming, like, brothers and sisters of the Horde, the Dark Iron Dwarves have destroyed the kegs. We must take the fight to them. She goes running off to Blackrock Mountain, forgets where the entrance is, and starts punching into the side of the mountain, to make a new hole to go fight the Dark Iron Dwarves and passes out in the crater she formed punching the side of the mountain. <laughs> so that's what I saw leveling up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what bitch did this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's y'all's favorite place to hang out and roleplay at? Let's start with Expo. Okay. This is an easy one. Well, I have two, but I got two answers right off the top of my head. Um, the first one, the classic, the traditional one, is RP Bridge. That's what we've named. We've all named it is RP Bridge in Stormwind. It's the little bridge between Trade District and Mage District, and it's really where everybody on the server, just at random point throughout the day, they just sit there and vibe, and you can find all kinds of people there. Um, you know, after a raid, you're tired. You just kind of want to zone out and not really focus on too much. You sit there. You have a new character. You're not really sure like how to play them yet, but you're trying to trying to find your feet with them. You go to RP Bridge and just sit there. There's uh, a, probably half of all of my walk-ups happen right there on that bridge. Really? Um, some sometimes. So I have two monitors and I'll like do my homework. I'm getting my master's degree in accounting right now. Uh, it's terrible. I don't recommend it to anybody. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be studying on one monitor and I'll have WoW open in the other one and sometimes I literally have to leave the bridge because too many people are walking up trying to RP with me. It's that active that sometimes it's actually a problem. Um, and then the second place is uh, our Tavern Night. We have basically declared the Slaughtered Lamb as uh, the Alliance's de facto RP hub. Um, we have a tavern night every Saturday. It used to be on, I think, Wednesdays it was. And we shifted it to Saturday because it worked better for most of the community. Um, and we'll be there in the Slaughtered Lamb. We have designated bartenders. Uh, we have people swapping out. Hey, I'm going to be busy this Saturday. And somebody else will step up. Be like, you know what? I can do it. I can do it for Saturday from, you know, 6 to 8. And then somebody else is like, well, I can do 8 to 10. And so we got, we got bartenders. We have events. We actually had... Um, somebody do an event uh in the slaughtered lamb a, a roll 20 event where we had to deal with uh an escaped warlock experiment they were experimenting on a basilisk and we went down there and, and saved the basilisk and it was a it was a whole thing um there's all kind of different events that take place there walk-ups we have our designated tavern night but usually if you just afk there in the slaughtered lamb in a matter of time, you will find somebody else who walks in there and you can RP with them. And it's something about Tavern Night is is accessible and low stakes that it's just chill enough that you can really go in there and be a little nervous and it's okay. It's really not that intimidating, but it's still, you can still find a lot of really good role play there and a lot of really good people. Hmm. Tristan? <clears throat> so... My personal place to, to hang out and just kind of zen is actually in Sunrock Retreat in Stone Talon Mountains. I absolutely love how quiet it can be. I don't find the occasional passerby leveler come running through. Um, it's kind of my favorite place to just be. If I'm needing, like, if I have a, a pretty overwhelming day, kind of thing, I'll just chill out there. Otherwise, in terms of places I go for role play, it will be um, either Crossroads or Thunder Bluff. Um, there's a guild on, on the server called uh, uh, Redwood Tribes. Yep. They host a lot of public uh, open area roleplay sessions. Uh, they mainly at Crossroads and...
and they had people all coming in, giving their positions. They opened it up to public to open dis uh, discussion after everybody made their arguing points. It was it's really cool. Some of the stuff that uh, you'll see out there with those things. The only problem is layering makes it much harder to find open role play. Yeah, it does. Sorry, one second. Uh, for some reason, the stream reset. All right. Uh oh. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> It said like reconnecting, I just, so I was like, "What's going on?" But I, I was listening. Oh. But yeah, no layering is usually the biggest hindrance I found with dealing with open role play. Um, but it's it's sometimes I'm not gonna lie, it's a little tough to find people randomly for role play because Horde doesn't hasn't quite established the RP bridge, if you would, <laughs> for areas for role play. I mean, we basically have either Crossroads or Thunder Bluff, wherever. Um, Redwoods are hosting their open discussions. So it, Horde has it a little harder, but the roleplay is still here. It's just sometimes a little harder to find. So I always try to point people to like the specific events that are happening throughout the week to help people that want to learn and understand more about roleplay. Hmm. Yama? Uh, Tristan, I'm glad to hear that the Redwood debates are still going strong. I was always jealous that y'all got to do that. Uh, for for me, Kel already addressed the the Alliance roleplay and the main hubs regarding that. Uh, I would say my favorite place to RP... Actually, first, the place I normally RP is in Nenia's Municipal Park offices, which is about as exciting as it sounds, though it does bring out some fantastic scenes. Uh, I just use like little Cathedral District Argent Dawn office, more or less. Uh, but I also hang out the Moonwell a lot with my character, uh, fielding questions, having philosophical debates, mentoring characters if they come up. It's kind of like an open office policy. But my favorite place to roleplay are like those hard to get places. For example, when I helped run a Shadow Cabal, we went past a bunch of 61 elites. There were a lot of just a lot of dying uh, to get to a huge altar in the Blasted Lands. That's like that's like super satanic, very like. Very dark magic, uh, and we enacted a, a, a huge public ritual there. So cool. some of those like hard to discover places are really special to me. So like, did you perform like human sacrifices in the game, or NPC sacrifices? Uh, um, or are Nanny you not allowed to discuss? Not comment <laughs> Nanny is not commenting on human sacrifice at this time. <laughs> oh boy, uh, who 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 is Kel in here? What do you mean? Uh, Adam MT says, "If you don't say another guard, I will fight you." Kel. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> that's me. We, yeah, we've had a, we recently had a huge battle at Netherguard Keep with uh, thirty something people. Um, wow, it was, it was, a, it was a massive, and that was part of the storyline I was talking about earlier with the cult of Cathal and the crazed druid who succumb, who succumbed to the void madness. Um, and she basically went insane and, uh, was beyond redemption and we had to stop her and her followers. Um, so yeah, that's probably why he's bringing it up is because he, Adam actually led the, uh, the good guys to establish a, a hold in Netherguard and that's where the final giant battle was. And I have got to say it was pretty epic. So was it yeah, a with... horde on horde fight or was it a horde and alliance? I mean, alliance on alliance. I, I should say alliance on alliance. Was it alliance it was, on alliance or? Yeah, it alliance? was it was all alliance. And we were doing um, the the roll 20 thing that I told you about. Oh, I uh, thought y'all were just like all like dueling <laughs> each other. and <laughs> You just see all the dual flags everywhere. <laughs> we... so, how, so how we like to do it, RP events. Uh, like I've hosted events where we have actually had PVP duels for prizes. However, how we did that is uh, it was basically... So the event was centered around the disparity between like the the, the the void and the light, right? And we had a Dem versus Lantana, more or less. And so their forces were um, pitted against each other. And Lantana at that point had grown to like such an immense like final raid boss that they only had a couple followers left, um, but they were immensely powerful, right? And so the good guys, quote unquote, uh, we had to splinter off in a couple different groups 
I led one of the groups and it was basically like a, a very scaled back, minimalistic uh, D&D style role. So we all had modifiers. We created character sheets ahead of time. Um, we were able to like, oh, I roll uh, 12, but I'm adding a point, you know, I'm adding four points because my character is trained with like light magic something like that. And so it made for like a lot of really fun, dynamic and surprising uh, turn of events. Like for example, my character was about to get shanked with a nat 20, which is rough because she's squishy. But then Adem, um, being the zealous, awesome pally that he is, stepped in front of it, made a cool moment. Uh, we had a couple other wild moments uh, between a lot of different people. There was a lot going on, but through collaboration, and a lot of great communication, we were able to make a very meaningful uh, climax to a long arching campaign, probably about a year and a half. Wow. Uh, Adam MT says, shout out to uh, Lantana for making up our uh, sheet systems and Artar, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Artor <laughs> Less. You say Artie. You say Artie. Yeah, <laughs> that's Artie. <laughs> Artie says, hey, I finally made it. Y'all are beasts. Love you, Nen and Kel. Aw. Yeah, he's the one who, uh, speaking of stabbing, he was the one who almost Yeah, I was thinking stabbed. of stabbing. <laughs> yeah, he was the one who tried to stab her. <laughs> oh, wow. I have I wrote so many. So I wrote, I wrote about 17 questions, and I had to skip some, because <laughs> when y'all were introducing yourselves, you kind of already answered them. I was like, all right, sweet. So let's see. I'm trying we to like to ramble. It's fine. No, I, I love <laughs> it. like talking. I love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Advice for the I'm gonna hit the questions that are uh, that we kind of didn't go over. But uh, advice for those that want to get into role playing expo. Oh, that's a good one. Um, it's a really good one. For me, uh, God, that is a good question. Pick your build your character concept that you want. Whatever it is you think you want to explore, whether it's, um, you know, a paladin that that seeks to help others, or whether it's just a scoundrel or whatever, have like that archetype, and don't lean too heavily into this perfect character concept. Just have your foundation, like we said earlier, and just just go out there. I mean, the role if you roll on a role player server, there are role players out there, even if everybody seems like they're out of character, they're running around trade district or doing whatever, um, run into the auction house, just put yourself out there. Um, sometimes people will connect with it. Sometimes they won't. I highly recommend it's uh, highly recommend downloading the add on TRP three. Um, for those who don't know, uh, total role play three, it, you basically can create your own profile. You can, customize your class you can customize your race you can put little uh, facts at a glance and anybody who also has that add-on will also see it so if you're just a human paladin you download that add-on you can be a half elf guard right or you can be like i specified for my druid nightmare druid um you can instead of a rogue maybe you're specifically an assassin or a spy or a a scenarian outrunner or whatever it gives you a lot of customized uh options um yeah just download that put yourself out there ask around you know say hey guys where's where is the role play happening where's what what guilds are holding public events and just show up and a lot of us uh you know we want more in the community the more the merrier so if we see a new rp or there we are very very welcoming so just put yourself out there Thank you for that. Tristan? I'd say he's covered a good portion of what I was going to say as well. Um, yeah, basically, if don't be afraid to talk to people. I mean, yes, we do have a lot of people on the server that are transfers as the big LOL RP gay kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that is an unfortunate thing. That is just a reality of when it comes to being a very, basically become a very popular server because of our balance issues, being that with PvP. Um, but don't be afraid to come walking up to people, especially if you see somebody doing basically the RP walk. If you see somebody walking around doing with that, that is an excellent flag to know if they are an RP player. 
Um, so don't be afraid to see somebody walking up and be like, hey, I have a question. You can always whisper them or just, just even to be curious about something and be like, hey, are you role playing right now? Yes, absolutely. Would you like to have an interaction? It's like, just talk. I mean, we are here. We are happy to help. I mean, I can't stress that enough, realistically. Thank you, Tristian. Yama? So this, this might be kind of blunt, but for RP, it's like we are, we are collectively engaged in a cringe cop concept of playing make believe with each other. <laughs> but there, but there is so much to be gleaned from that. Um, RP is dope because you can explore imagination, creativity. A lot of us are creative writers in our spare time. A lot of us enjoy discussing media and things like that. So. Let's all just, like, please, let's all just agree that, like, what we do is going to get trolled occasionally yeah. and made fun of, things like that. You just got to roll with it because having that community, having the ability to collaboratively create something special in something as niche as uh, an MMORPG is something really awesome and special. Uh, I think for me, it's consumed. Like, I spend way too much time thinking about this. Way too much. But um, it's fun. It's, it's exciting. It allows you to explore themes. The community itself is wonderful, whether you're doing Absolutely. arenas or, yeah, or, or like just doing like PvE content. Um, even if you're not a huge RPer, whatever your level is, the community will always welcome you and always try to help you as best they can. Um, our peers in general tend to just be uh, really sympathetic. Um, people who are community minded and want what's best for everybody. So give us a try. We're dope. <laughs> uh Polar Bear K I'm not gonna say that last part. Polar Bear Cave Jew said <laughs> long time role player with Tristian. Uh I don't don't make your initial <laughs> overcomplicated. Let it grow and don't attempt to have it all figured out initially. Yeah. He's just, that's he's a just good people. He's been point. a long time player. Right on. Yeah. I would say Yeah, that's an excellent. I would say I'm not a I'm not a huge role player, but I feel like if you just have like the name figured out, you you kind of write the story like write a background and then just create the character in World of Warcraft and then your story continues only from there. Yeah. It'll change the moment you come into contact with somebody, True. your idea of who your character is will automatically change or be influenced a little bit. So it's best not to to try to focus on it too much but yeah come up with a name come up with a brief concept in a brief attitude and uh and let it grow from there well said kel also really quick the only other add-on you need for rp other than trp is misspelled please get it you will thank me later <laughs> <laughs> Mis- good one yeah <laughs> all right there you go i probably are you, are you spelling misspelled <laughs> I, I misspelled misspelled <laughs> See, if you had the add on. The whole point. If you had the add on. <laughs> emote splitter is also really good. Um, I oh, didn't yeah. have it for a while and it was torture. Yeah, emote splitter is great. That makes you parapost. So there are different levels of RPing, right? There's like paraposting, which is like, hi, I'm briefly writing a novel. And there's like mirror <laughs> RP where you're like, you do something and I'll, you know, I'll reflect that. And then there's like, oh, I just do dialogue. All forms are totally cool and acceptable. Do whatever you feel like. But if you want to parapost, emote splitter. <laughs> Don't be me. <laughs> Let's see. How, so, one interesting one I kind of want to figure out. I know we touched somewhat on it, but how does your guild ranking system work? Like, is it based on merit? Is it based on how long you've been playing? Does it, like, what's it based on? Like, I, I wouldn't really know because for me as a guild leader, I base it off of um, merit. Like, if you're always out there helping people, you want to be more active in the community. You want to be like in it to win it kind of uh, i promote you based on that plus like one month and certain periods of ranks you gotta be known like not to be like too to- or not to be toxic or anything like that but i don't know how it is with playing expo um that'll vary dramatically from guild to guild but i can speak on the cult of cathal that i was in and then the 
merged guild that I am in now that we reformed for narrative reasons after the cult leader was defeated. Um, we actually rebranded the whole guild and slightly changed our rank structure. But for Cult of Cathal, most of it was entirely in character. Um, so for whatever character, whatever in character reason you had, so we had, I'll start from the bottom. We had an OOC rank, which is out of character. Um, friends of the guild, um, you know, maybe alts of the main players who aren't really like a, technically a part of the void cult, but still want to hang out with us. But then above that, we had uh, an initiate rank for people who pledged themselves to the void lord. And then above that, we had um, oh god, I can't even remember. It's only been a month, and I'm I'm blanking. Um, uh, cultist, I think it was just cultist. Um, above that, you you pledge yourself and you are initiated into the cult officially. And usually, we do that after you've been in for like a month. Um, and then we had a senior cultist, which we basically just gave some seniority to, which is a regular cultist who's been around for, you know, about six months or a little longer. And then we had an officer ranking, and they also had their own in-character special connection to the Void Lord. They connected, they could speak with the Void Lord directly, whereas most people cannot do that. Um, so we had, we had in-character reasons for the mechanical um rankings that we had and then we had the cult leader and now that we have our new reformed guild which has some of the good guys who helped defeat lantana and some of the bad guys who turned over a new leaf after their leader was defeated we have different ranks for former cultists we have different ranks for the good guys our guild has just a ton of ranks right now um and honestly promotions are almost entirely in character whatever makes sense for your character you could be OOC rank at a character for six months and then one day say, hey, you know what? I want to join up with you guys in character. All of a sudden, you'll get promoted to whatever your whatever the good guy rank is, right? Like Guardian. Actually, I I did this with Meta last night. I recruited I recruited uh, Yamaneko's alt last night to join the good guys. And she had promoted her like three times to um, the Guardian rank because she her paladin was going to help my paladin. Um you know, keep watch over the the, the former cultists. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on guild to guild, but that's how we do it. So you you said um, you know your guild is all based on the shadows and worshiping. Do y'all do you share the same altar as a uh, Yama's guild? But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think that would be really cool though. Um, no, like we have the leftover body. And you're like, well, we'll offer <laughs> the leftover body to the Void Lords. <laughs> We did. We did reclaim her former keep uh, that Yamaneko's that her Nenia character was a part of. Um, we had to dispel it and dismantle a whole lot of traps that they set up, magical traps and wards, and and uh, yes, yeah, so that was a whole that was a whole event just doing that. Thanks, uh, Nen, for setting us up. <laughs> Almost got me killed. <laughs> Um, no, we kept our, we kept our sacrifices, uh, uh up in Amber Mill for the most part, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Kill has an all, in almost every guild, someone got their soul stolen, it was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It was a fun time. <laughs> 10 out of 10, would recommend. <laughs> Tristan? Alright, so, um... Bulwark is a military coalition, is the story behind it. So all of our ranks are based on uh, some of the more ancient military-style ranking. Uh, but we are basically done on merit and basically on what sh somebody shows... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Man, I hate it when you get... You have a word and you lose it. But basically what they show and they can excel at. Um, so basically our ranks are... We have a very basic rank for which is conscript. That's the first rank for alts, basically people that are on trial to see if they even would be a good fit for the guild. Then we have um, Helot, Hoplite, Ironclad, Vanguard, Sentinel, Centurion, Aegis, Highguard, and Polemarch, which is the guild guild leader. That's me. Um, and basically, Helot to Ironclad is based on merit. Helot is basically, okay, you're a fit for the guild, and now we're going to see if you can see how well you perform with everybody. Hoplite, you are a full service member of the guild. Ironclad, you are an exceptional individual. You've been with us a long time. You've stepped up and been in all forms of involvement with the guild. Um, 
Vanguard, Vanguard, Sentinel, and Centurion are basically sub-officers, which is for, like, RP, PvP, and PvE. After that is basically officer ranks. Hmm. But it's, it's because I run a business in real life as well, so I can kind of feel out how people, like, we have a mantra, the right person in the right seat. So we kind of get a feel out, it's like, hey, this person seems to be really good at leading the raids. I think they should be approached and discussed as a possibility for Vanguard. And then if they show enough promise, possibility of going to Aegis, which is then you are the PvE officer of the guild. You are in charge of content. This is your thing. This is what you do. So um, like a council, pretty much. Yeah. Whereas basically, I will still have the veto power, but I still listen to them and try to get a feel for like, I consult with them and discuss what's the best decision of a particular individual event or situation with the guild. Gotcha. So, so far, haven't had any problems with it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's how I like my guild systems work, because I'm not a natural born leader, but I like my mind can only handle like doing like two different things at once. So for me, I would like be in charge of like the PVP and uh, some like fun event planning. Then I would promote like I like to have an odd number, so it's like a if you have like an even number and you're trying to vote for one thing, it's probably not going to get approved or not. It's always probably going to end up in a tie. But if you have an odd number in your council, you can always have that uh, one-sided. For like, I, act, oh, I actually should... have that. <laughs> yeah, see <laughs> <The> odd numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yama. Uh, well, currently I can't speak too much regarding RP because Nightfall, which is the reformed Moonblade Sentinels who are now allowing all classes that are ranks. Thank you for the mage cookies, Gail. Um, <laughs> it's just PV, it's just PVE based. So they award positions accordingly, but soon we will have an RP faction. I can't, however, speak to OSC, the Obsidian Sun Company. Uh, they were a humongous day one guild that I was a part of, not from day one. Um, but I was briefly an officer of, and they did have uh, an arrangement similar to Bulwark that, that actually worked out incredibly well for a long period of time. Eventually, it, it was disbanded, um, and Alir and Reach uh, went off to do their own thing, and so on. But uh, generally, that did work. For my own guild, the Fairer Hand, which is my rogue guild, it is entirely rp focused we will do arenas and pve content as it comes to us but as far as ranking goes there is the pit boss which is my character and then there are scum lords oh. we are pretty much all equal we are all equal and you show your merit by doing shady degen stuff like mugging people <laughs> looking at you expo <laughs> 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 and then uh the guild i also founded with my ex-partner with selma phage uh we literally only had seven people in the guild that was it it was incredibly elitist it was incredibly shadowy uh and it was meant to be an illuminati type situation like golden dawn like deep hermetic sort of like we are controlling the strings these seven people are people you know that were hand chosen to be part of something that was going to be you know incredibly both problematic and and dynamic. Uh, so again, the, the quality of that posed a lot of problems, um, but it also made people feel uh, like they were worthy, in a sense. Um, and yeah, Kel will address everything else in the Covenant, which is uh, my old skill, so there you are. Sweet. So this is a kind of a, a weird one, but I've heard a lot of stories behind this. Oh my God! What <laughs> this this goes out to like it's, it's nothing weird, I promise. So when you're role playing, <laughs> do you end up having feelings for the person that you end up marrying in the game when you're role playing, or having a, like, a role play relationship with in the game? Like, do y'all end up like having so feelings gonna, for each other in real life? I'm gonna start this off that I actually did get married to a lady that I uh, that I met in World of Warcraft. Really. Yep. Unfortunately, we did. Um, we divorced a little over two years ago. Oh. Bigger issues, but we had been together for eight years. I always find that amazing, like how people from like a video game just like, hey, let's just meet up and. This is gonna sound creepy as hell, but she laughed about it every single time that she married her stalker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
here's how because here's how we first met each other i was sitting in shadow prey village on my troll shaman this is back original burning crusade this is original burning crusade so this is a very long time ago where i then see her as an elf me as a troll her as an elf go running by and she's like oh she skaters past and i'm like what you running for you looking like a little crab when you skitter like that <laughs> she, we just started interacting from there and so i added her to my friends list and I would see her on her friends list, and I would intentionally go out and interact with her to do things and kind of – because we hit it off so well with the roleplay stuff. And this was like, oh my god, this is when roleplay was really new with World of Warcraft to me. So I ended up following her around, bringing her to different things. And at one point, I intentionally died in the middle of a zone. Like, please Just come help her. me. Come res me. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up meeting in real life. We started dating for a while, and then we ended up getting married. Do you like me? Yes or no? Yes and no is like the re resing. Like she'll walk by if she says no. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of the metric, but not quite. It was it was more just a point of like, come interact with me. I like role play. <laughs> but that's pretty neat. Um, Expo one a story like that? Uh, not not that crazy. Um. <laughs> Um, it is, it is a thing. It has its own name. We call it the RP bleed, where your emotions from in-game bleed to out-of-game. And some people are really good about curbing that, and some people are not. Um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that it is even a thing until maybe it's too late. Um, I do think on some level... When you're interacting with these characters, especially on an extended basis, you do get to know the person behind the character. Um, I mean, I, I consider myself you know really good friends with a lot of these people that I play with, including Yamaneko here and several others in the Covenant, and du Covenant of Dusk and uh, a lot of others. Um, so you do have at least some connection with this person out of character. Um, and because of that, I do think it can be easy for some people to find themselves bleeding accidentally. Um, there's two ways to go about it. You either realize the feelings are there, acknowledge it to yourself, and just kind of swallow it and say, you know what, it is what it is. I'm not going to let it affect me. Or you do the opposite and you, you know, date them or marry them or whatever. Um, but I think uh, I don't have any crazy stories um like that but i've definitely been around enough to see it um and i know it's real and i've seen it happen to others um yeah i mean it, it's a real thing the rp bleed is real thank you for that yama okay sorry i just got locked out of my own apartment and had to crawl in through the doggy door um hello <laughs> <laughs> so you role played as a dog? <laughs> or <really? laughs> You know what? Uh, I would. I'm. I personally am not a furry, but I would try it one one time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um. So bleed. Uh. Oh boy, Tristian. I moved from Japan to be with someone that I met on WoW because he was absolutely perfect for me. We had a great relationship. It didn't ultimately end up working out, but the fact that I could write with somebody who was intelligent and creative and was also, you know, pretty good looking, you know, it helps nice. uh, because you do, you do get, yeah, like, you know, when you're writing fiction by yourself, it's just you, right? Mm -hmm. It's just you. Um, but when you're exploring themes, with other people, you do create incredibly strong bonds occasionally. And our characters are just... Okay, if you can explode yourself into, like, fractal images of your identity, or at least what you know about it, you know, you're probably going to make a character, whether you're writing fiction or playing Pathfinder or D&D &D or Final Fantasy or whatever have you, like, some part of that, of you, is going to be in your character. So, like, it's like two neurons trying to be friends. You're going to find somebody who vibes with you. You absolutely will. I've met some of my best friends 
for this game. Like, shout out to Vit, shout out to Pepper, Adem, Lantana, like, Artie, Jillian, all y'all. Like, great people that I can hang out with outside of game. We watch movies together. In fact, we're, we have a movie night tonight. Yep. And then we play games online. Um, I'm, I'm IRL seeing somebody that I met on the game in, like, a very unconventional long-distance relationship. He's mm -hmm. wonderful, and I love him dearly. Aww. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's not exactly a... He's not exactly a role player, but he is uh, one of my best friends. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's a it's a hobby like any other. You know, I'm going to, not that I'd ever knit. I don't have the mental stamina for it. My ADHD would flare. But let's say I'm going to knitting club and I'm like, oh, let's talk about knitting shit. And you connect with somebody talking about knitting shit. IRL you Carol talk Lee. to somebody enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you talk to someone enough about your shared hobby and you're going to, you're going to like them more. I and. Agree. Yeah, and also like when you romantically RP, and okay, here's my here's my thing. Here's my thing about romantic and ERP and shit like that, is that I love a good Arthurian storyline storyline. Excuse me, full of quests and and battles. That that is my jam. I love that. I grew up on that. But at the same time, romance and ERP to a to an extent, with a lot of consent, a lot of talking, is just as um, valid. Like all it's the doors are pretty much open. Yeah, it's just as valid a way to explore your character and explore themes as anything else. It does require more work, but it's like, you know, gore a violence, all that stuff. A, a lot, lot of trust. Of trust. A lot of trust, yeah. right. And but, but like, when people, if people were to make fun of it, it's just like, you know what, bro? You're on Tinder right now on dating apps. <laughs> like, let's be real. I we'll just got called that. out. Wow. Us... <laughs> 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 Sorry, bro, I'm not into trolls. Actually, the super secret is, I think trolls are the hottest race, but... Beyond that, um... Don Cumon! No, I'm kidding! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mod, I'm a... Did Loa be with this one? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Elune, bless, bless you in the darkness. But anyway, um... <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like you know, it, it, those are all ways to explore characters and themes and tropes that we see in literature, that we see in media, that we are able to create with other people. So yeah, eventually, at some point, probably you're going to find yourself feeling some sort of way about somebody. And like Kel said, there are two ways to navigate it. You can completely ignore it and be like, you know what? I got to pull back. Like, this is not cool. <laughs> or you give into it and move across the fucking world for somebody or get married. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will say something that we haven't brought up yet is actually the dark side of bleed. Um, I have actually lost very good friendships over role play, role play drama that basically two characters butt heads so hard that I was basically told never to talk to them again. Like, they never wanted to interact with me, dealing with me, even though what I was doing was explicitly a roleplay situation. But apparently the way things transpired bothered them so much to the point that they never wanted to deal with me, ever. Period. Discord, game, nothing. They never wanted to talk to me ever again. So that is something to be aware of, that if you feel yourself getting personally involved or offended about something that's happening with roleplay take a moment and see is this you or is it your character is it the character you're dealing with or is it the person you're dealing with so that is something to very much be aware of when dealing with roleplay drama especially when it comes to like very distinct political differences of the game yeah. so that's brilliant Brilliant what, piece of advice right there. What I try to do, like, if I did was get into role playing, and this is something I struggled with, and I know, uh, Expo, you said you were in the military, right? Yes, Marine Corps. Marine Corps. So when you came home, all Hi, that Daddy. work, all that work stress, you, you like, you didn't leave it at work. It always came home with you, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's one thing <laughs> that I struggle with. Sometimes I bring my work stress home, and when I'm playing video games, I play just to de-stress but I, I don't get distressed so that's like one thing i've been doing like i'm i'm that's why i kind of want to do role playing and kind of don't want to do role playing because i'm worried if that stressor comes back into my life where i bring my work stress back home with me like i'm just not gonna have a good time rping you know like i feel like that's probably some reasons why so many uh or not so many but some uh friendships break in role playing is just because of like probably major life stressors and they're having a bad day and they're just bringing it into the role playing like they just don't want to deal with much yeah i've 
I've seen that, and I definitely can say that does happen. But I have also seen even more instances of people explore stress or trauma or things like that it, through roleplay that they really never th would have any other outlet to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. I've seen people explore breakups, divorces, um, death, um, or some lighter things like uh, the loss of a, a friend or getting fired from a job or alcoholism or drug abuse i mean there's the whole whole spectrum of of issues um can be explored again with the right people uh the, with the people you know on the server willing to engage with that but yes you can bring it in and ruin an experience and just kind of stress everybody out or you can bring it in find a way to explore it safely and have everybody there support you and help you and really kind of reflect on issues in your own life and sometimes it happens you don't even notice it sometimes you'll just wake up you'll you'll be in the middle of a scene and you'll realize oh my god this is uh this is really similar to what i'm going through um i won't go into too much detail but being a nightmare druid um he was Kelidor was physically thrown into the nightmare through a portal at one point and had a lot of dreams that uh you know a lot of nightmares that haunted him after that a lot of experiences that he relived in the nightmare and being in the marine corps i'll go ahead and save everybody the fun details but i too have still to this day i've been out for like eight years now and i still have some dreams that i wish i didn't have and it I didn't realize it until one day I'm in the middle of like telling my friend about a scene. They're like, oh, yeah, how'd that scene go? I was like, oh, it was cool. I was blah, 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 blah. And then I was like in the middle of typing and I was like, oh, my God, it's me. <laughs> um, That's crazy. But it, 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 it helps. It can help. Again, I mean, it's it's on the person to manage like, OK, am I going to bring this into the game in a negative way or am I going to intentionally explore it with, you know, boundaries and safety and with friends that I trust? But just as much good can come from it as bad. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I'm spot on. Yeah, I think a lot of the community is very good about maintaining like trust, consent, and support when it comes to scenes with darker or touchier topics. But overall, writing is cathartic. And if you can find a scene partner that allows you to explore themes through that prism of your character, like for example, um, I, again, was raised a militant atheist, but when people ask Nenia for advice about something, I filter it through this lens of like, how would somebody who was raised in a deeply religious shrine react to this? And it also forces me to confront my own feelings. There have also been sensitive topics that I won't get into, like trigger warning topics. Um, as a community, if allowed and if consented to, we can explore together in like a dynamic way. There are also topics and problematic people and situations that threaten to tear the, t the community apart, which is why open communication, clear comms, is incredibly crucial to maintaining the balance of the server and making sure everyone feels welcome and like they can freely express themselves. We've had we've had some issues in the past. I won't get into it, but we've had some issues in the past where we had to be like, hey, how are we gonna deal with this person? How are we deal with this situation? Um, and through just collaboration and general a general sense of community, we've been able to come to solutions that benefited everybody. So I have total faith in Grab and the fact that we can handle any like weird hurdles that come up yeah when it comes to rp because rp rp sensitive we're all like uh, all, all my rp friends are super sensey babies and i love them all but like come on <laughs> <laughs> like what, we what all if, have like so many feelings so what we're if they're just role playing as a sensitive person <laughs> i would like to find one role player that doesn't <laughs> that isn't actually an enormously amazing sensitive creature <laughs> <laughs> Like, y'all got, you know, Sweaty Raiders have loot drama. We have, like, personal drama. Personal drama is just as difficult to navigate as any of that. Mm -hmm. It's not always fun, but you got to do it. 
It's actually, that's actually a really good point. Raiders have loot drama, and PvPers have, you know, like, uh, a class... You're in position yourself correctly. Drama. Yeah, arenas, or you should have used this. <laughs> Why did you trinket blind? You should have trinketed kidney shot. You know, and people get mad at each other, and it blows yeah. out of proportion when it shouldn't. Um, this is this is no different. <laughs> it just also includes themes of, like, difficult topics occasionally. Like, uh... I mean, I'm not going to call you out, but like with nightmare stuff, like, yeah, you, you kind of went into your experience as a Marine to, to in, inform some of that. Yep. I hope didn't it was a good exercise it. for you. I didn't realize yeah. it until it was too late, but then I, <laughs> I mean, I kind of embraced it and I was like, you know, like I, it, 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 it was helpful and I didn't even realize it. You know, maybe RP is very therapeutic. Like you get it, to it is. in touch with like, per se, your inner demons. And you want to like, like you're, you're like subconsciously thinking about your story and just going into it. And you're like, oh shit, that's me. All right, yeah. Benny. So when are you going to RP a therapist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> uh, I'll start, I'll start, an, I'll start another account and just roll Alliance. <laughs> I just want a really nice gnome lady, you know? <laughs> I want a gnome grandma. Oh, uh, no. Just... Pint already <laughs> took that from me. Uh, so, another fun fact about me. I used to be uh, Pint's uh, arena trainer because I don't know uh, Pint's pronouns. I didn't get to know Pint that well. But, so, I was in the Discord server for a hot minute and she, she or he knew uh, I was boosting people and wanted me to teach uh pint wanted me to teach uh about the class of a mage so we ended up doing that and then i guess his mods really did not like me so they banned me and made up some weird shit about me <laughs> oh good grief yeah and i was like oh okay then everyone asked like what happened and if you look in the discord server you see pint refugees those are people that left Pint's Discord server to come to this Discord server because of what happened. So I don't know how Pint's Discord community is now, but it used to be very toxic about two, almost two years ago. But I'm hoping it got better because Pint, really cool person, love him to death. Um, sorry, I just totally got off topic. Um, but very cool person, very creative. Um, Let's see. We're going to get to our uh, last topic because I promised everyone this would be an hour. <laughs> Look, you got a bunch of people. We talk who... a lot. Yeah, exactly. No, no, that's what people. I love. Like, so, so I want to invite y'all back to like a part two of the role play because I have so many like, I think we only did like seven questions out of the 17 that I wrote. And I want to like, <laughs> like, I want to keep going, but. Yeah, there there is a lot of nuance that we are intentionally skipping over just to but I condense our answers. This is our condensed answers. <laughs> <laughs> it is really, really hard, especially for me because I sell for a living. It's like I talk to people day to day for a living. So I, I, I agree that we have really been like pulling at our own chains, trying to like give you a, the briefest answer without yeah. giving all the detail. Yeah, I feel that I'm also <laughs> bad about that. <laughs> So, this is kind of outside of role playing, but if there was one thing about the game you could change, what would it be? Oh, all right. Are we talking about classic? It, it could be anything or... in the World of Warcraft. Oh God. Okay. Well, retail the writing. All right. Let me just let me just throw that out. The the writing and the systems that feel like oh you have to log in every single day. It feels like a, a mobile game in it my mind. It basically feels like um, a job that you have yeah. to mm -hmm. like it like what what is it what is it called? Uh ground groundhog day where you do the same thing over and over again. You feel like you're getting nowhere and it just feels like the same story and you're just doing the same thing yep. every single yep. day. But and classic it's completely different. Yeah, so classic has more of a grind but it feels less grindy or it can it depends on how you go about it but for classic i mean you can sit there over a weekend and just bang out a whole uh reputation 
Whereas I feel like for retail, a lot of what you do is intentionally dispersed over three weeks. And if you don't have an hour to log in every single night for three weeks, you fall behind. In Classic, you can kind of ebb and flow. You can kind of catch up on one weekend and then just chill for the rest of the week and then catch up again on the next weekend. Um, I wish I wish retail had more... Uh, variety in viable gameplays gameplay styles because i love the uh i love transmog i love the some of the zones they're absolutely incredible i feel like retail rp would be wonderful on retail and it it still is to a degree but it would be even better on retail if the writing was a little bit better and the gameplay was more enjoyable um but there is something quaint about classics feel and RP and just the, the, the vibes behind it. Um, yeah, I, that would be my answer, though. The writing and uh, less grindy mobile game feeling. That way I could enjoy retail a little bit more. Adamant, he says, fewer bullshit re- retention mechanics would be dope, too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you want me to retain as a player, then just quit trying to keep me around as a player. Just make a good game and I'll stick around. <laughs> quit trying to make me log in for 30 minutes a day every single day. Anyways, that's that's my little rant. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Thank you. Tristan? Um, so I gave up on retail probably four or five years ago. So I really have no good things to say about it of any, of what i would even want to improve because i don't know what the current gameplay style is i tried shadowlands for maybe a week it's horrible just said i'm done <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, you know when you're driving on the road and you smell like a dead animal that's that's what retail is every time you look at it no i smell money <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Crabs. I do that. that's part of what i do for work i grab dead stuff from people's yards if these if necessary but um <laughs> I know uh, that could be a whole nother discussion if you want. Um, the but basically a lot of my answers would basically consist around like the things that are happening with classic Burning Crusade. So I honestly think one of the things that should have been adjusted with this, and I'm of the some changes crowd. Um, I appreciated the uh, the efforts of like the no changes, but there's some things where now the a good demographic of the players now are older. Like we're in our 30s now for a good portion of us. We don't have the time to sit around and grind like we used to in our middle school, college days. Facts. That is that is a long gone <laughs> fantasy for me. So like one of the things I would have done is like reputation account sharing. So like one reputation you grind on one character, a, a half or even a percentage of that gets pushed on all your alts that are of level appropriate degree. Mm-hmm. So that way it's like, for me to have to grind out the key for Shattered Halls, or, or just even, like, to do Heroics for Burning Crusade, I don't always have the time to now work on five other ults that, like, oh, I feel like playing an Enhancement Shaman. Oh, I feel like playing a Fury Warrior. I don't yep. have the time to grind out every single one of those with the reputation. I, I physically do not have the time in a day to do that without realistically giving up. Mm-hmm. I would say that's probably one of the things I would do is a little more of like account wide benefit to different things. Because if I remember, they sort of did that in Mists of Pandaria, where if you had exalted on one character, you then got a bonus for others. So it was a little extra. So the grind wasn't as bad. Or am mm-hmm. I misremembering? Um, I, I have a bad memory. Um, I yeah, it tells you that's when I stopped playing was with with Mist. So, um, but that's basically one of the ideas I would have had to make the game a little better. And fear is probably the most overpowered mechanic in PvP. Yeah, and uh, I can get twelve if seconds. I can get fear locked. Stun locks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if Rogues. I can get feared, <laughs> if I can get feared for thirty seconds straight, that is not a good ability mechanic for the game. I'm sorry, I I can't agree with that. As a PvP, or that's what I think. I agree. Yama. Uh, first of all, Tristan, come fight me. That would be fun. Yeah. Okay. I'm really bad against. I'm really bad against paladins. So I'm I would like. So I nobody appreciate will die. And la- Minji <laughs> says, "Laughs in warrior." <laughs> <laughs> 
it's cool. I'm, I'm disc. I'll probably annoyingly survive for too long and then I'll run out of mana, so it's fine. But um, honestly, I'm not that familiar with why I've only been playing for like a year and a half. But with both of you said, just the ease of being able to like level and dedicate play time to something other than like the daily grind or rep gains or whatever. It's like, yes, that would free up time for people to like to RP, right? To like explore their community and not feel obliged to do something for their character all the time. So any change that facilitates more RP would be welcome. I would change the fact that Grob is considered a good server because it has good population balance and instead change that as Grob is a cool place because it has a fantastic community of people who are welcoming and want to see you succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And be creative. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So like we also we have a great server balance balance because like we have RP PvP guilds. True. Come fight me. <laughs> I will do it in character. I will do it in my fucking RP gear. Come fight me. Come fight. So I actually have enchanted and specifically done all the enhancements to my <laughs> RP kit so I can actually stand up to a fight. Like I got <laughs> the tank. I'm here I got a bra going patch. on. I got the tank patch for my legs on my level 38 chainmail <laughs> pants. This is what happens when you invite reason. Horde and Alliance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Grob, it's a mutual fun. It's a mutual fun. <laughs> yeah, Grob used to have a war campaign. I'm sure Triss could probably speak on this better than I can because I didn't participate in it, but I was around for it. Blacktooth Grin and a few other major guilds, they would coordinate PvP and attack what? zones. They would attack Menetho oh. Harbor and defend it. OSC, would, OSC yeah. had... had world pvp every tuesday and we had an rp event beforehand i would love to see that happen and i'm hosting elections for city council because then he was the only counselor after everyone left um and we do have a role emissary there is actually one horde character that has decided to throw her hat in her little kitty hat in um as an emissary but i encourage you all to like facilitate better mediation between the factions so we can have cool events like that again Yep. So, Tris, let's, really let's make it happen. It. Bring it back, uh, Tris. Let's do it. I've actually been wanting to do something like that. I My problem is I just don't have the time. I've been wanting to get something like that put together, and I've been trying to reach out to folks for help. And I mean, I'd be down to help. Okay. Fuck, let's yeah. figure something out. Because, I mean, yeah. I'm going to talk about something that was from the original Burning Crusade. We had literally a six month long server campaign called The Fall of Legends, where it was literally. Four raids, two horde, two alliance were fighting over particular zones. Like one I specifically remember is we did um I'm blanking on the name right away, but the camp the alliance camp in Terracar Forest. Um the, Illyrian. The, yeah, that one. Yeah. We literally did a ground battle. Two raids versus two raids to try to take over just fight for Illyrian camp, Reach. whatever it is. I forget. Illyrian Reach, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we, it was because the only thing we didn't allow was flying mounts for that particular engagement because we wanted to be a literal slugfest of us just fighting face to face with each other. So and that was it literally came to the point where it's like we were fighting over different areas and there was an overarching story of why everybody was involved with different things. And one of them came down to an artifact from one of the Titans. Oh, that was found in the Akanai Crypts. And that was one of the big areas, so there just became a giant... Like, we crashed the server three times at Hala one day. And that's why we have layers now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Tris to thank for that. <laughs> I like how you said four layers, and I, my, my whole mind went to layers. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, damn, man, is that... I was like, that's that some of the, cool, that's some the magic that I miss. That's some of the magic that I remember when I was from crashing? playing from so long ago. <laughs> 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 Come on, how good of a flex is that to say you fought so hard you crashed the server? Uh, the time I killed Asmongold uh, when he was uh, doing the Nomergon <laughs> Island. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I will I will bow to that one. Uh, yeah, I think OSC actually crashed the server when we had a... Uh, it was like a Grob one-year anniversary World PvP event. It was absolutely batched and insane. Uh, I would love to see more of that. I love World, I PvP, that World PvP, excuse me. Oh my gosh, right? I remember my whole World PvP experience is my butthole clenching as I try to get through a mage portal in time because I'm overwhelmed by something. 
when we have to like move forces, we're like, oh my god, there's 20 of them. Like, oh no, Redwood Trips came and it's like, oh no, relocate. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not gonna make it. And then I get picked off or something stupid because I'm Twitch. <laughs> but yeah, I would love that. That's World PB is my favorite thing. Um, the OSC remnants, Pepper, Vit, Kurt, we would all love to see that come back. We we grew up on that. We were bottle fed by World PVP. Start... That's the only reason. Let's coordinate with No Mercy Mafia. They'll bring the numbers. <laughs> They have some recent drama that I'm not aware of because I'm not in there. Um, but I would love to get in contact with them and make something happen because I live for World PvP. Yeah. So one That's thing I would add. Oh, sorry. Continue. Oh, nothing. Go ahead. No. <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, you're good. No. Um, have you ever played Star Wars Galaxies? I have not. So the housing in that, this is something I would add to World of Warcraft. Is um, this is gonna sound weird? But made it how they did Warlords of Draenor, but more custom customizable. So you would set like you would have a different window, like uh, looking for group. You would have your guild city, original city, or sorry, default city. So you would have Stormwind. But if you bought it as a guild, which is say it's fifty thousand gold to own the whole city, but you can keep adding on to it. You as a guild have to come together, put in the guild bank, and then buy property, and then you can customize it as much as you want to make it into your own city but you have to go get st you have to mine copper for the stone the rough stone you and you can upgrade the quality of your building your buildings can get damaged over time through uh raids on your city from let's just say horde pvp players they can come and raid your city but they have to like chop down trees which the trees won't chop down they'll just be like on a cool down timer and all that but like have That's something cool. like that more interactive i I was going to post this on the WoW subreddit page and then it got taken down. But something as interactive as that, like make a separate engine and then like a World of Warcraft customizer engine for your city. Just type in your guild name and your guild has like a guild has like a password only the guild leader will know. So they can edit the whole guild city. You know? That would, I like that. Yeah. I like yeah, that a lot. Cool. That's great. Yeah. But again, like as long as we all in a community way, acknowledge that something exists, True. then it does. So like, there could be a system in place that would allow folks to have quote unquote housing. Like for example, there are various characters. For example, my friend Pepper, Vander Rask, he has his little, his little drug den. You know, it's an old town and it's his drug den. And whenever I go there, I'm like, this is Pepper's drug den. And we all pretend He's that that is his drug den because it's our peers. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. He's sleeping right next to like, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> He's probably rolling a cigarette. Just but, uh, yeah, it's like we all, we all acknowledge it to be real, therefore it is real. That's the power of collaborative make-believe, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of housing is really cool. Um, in my, like, three-month stint, I played a troll, and they had extensive player housing in ZG. Like, everyone had their little house, and they had their little descriptor of it, and they had, you know, attrition like that you know like in that system and it was really cool i would love to see something like that but it would take a really dedicated and organized person to facilitate it yeah i am not that person but if someone <laughs> wants to it will please do i will pay you in gold and rp respect <laughs> so to wrap things up because we went a little over the time but it's okay i think everyone really enjoyed this podcast so for people that don't know y'all that are in this uh stream right now where can they find y'all at besides the discord server <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, I am Kelidor. You can find me in Covenant of Dusk, or you can find me on my, uh, my dwarf alt, Drugar, also in Covenant of Dusk. Um, and you can find us in the Traveler's Rest, uh, s Discord server. It is basically the, the, uh, RP hub of Crobulus right now, but I'll let, uh, Yamaneko plug that because she now helps moderate it. Um, but yeah. You can find me in Covenant of Dusk on Kelidor. Um, yeah, I'm Trissian. Um, or I play Trissian. Um, I run Bulwark, uh, the RP PvP guild. Um, you can find me. I lurk a lot of different places. Like I'm usually somewhere on Reddit, <laughs> lamenting about an alliance attack on the city. I'll do that quite often. <laughs> um, otherwise, you can find me through. Uh, we have our own Bulwark Discord. I'm also on the Grobulus Discord. Um, if you see anybody with the bulwark tag, you can always tell them that you're trying to reach me, and they know how to get in touch with me. Sweet, Yama. 
Um, again, Traveler's Rest, Rest, excuse me, which was started by the lovely Lantana, the fantastic Adem, who has done so much for this community, both of them together, and Ruchio, who is a mage, a uh, great moderator, fantastic person. Um, please come find us on Traveler's Rest. We have resources, we have lore discussions, we have pet pictures, we have the cutest fucking cats. The cutest <laughs> cats, cutest and also cutest come... Rabbit. come <laughs> I, I have the cutest bearded dragon. We're actually going to go on a walk after this podcast. And uh, you can see pictures of him <laughs> in the, the Traveler's Rest Discord. Horde are welcome. Um, as attested by several people who are in the Hand of Lord Crown who have now joined. So please come join us. You can find me in game on Nenia. That's N-H-E-N-I-A. The H is silent. You can also say the Henia, but it bothers me. <laughs> Occasionally I'll be on Verity with the Ferret hand or Maida, which is in Covenant, but uh, Nenia is with Nightfall, which is uh, primarily a pretty super chill raiding guild with a slight RP bent. Former 